live TV here. I've enabled the live TV and that takes you to the live TV PVR clients screen automatically. So I want to enable that one. That's what I'm running. So I need to go down here and I'll plug this in. Yeah, the quick quick way to enter the address here if you just have the remote. I don't have a keyboard, wireless keyboard into this is if you go up to the IP address then it maps the keys uh, to the number and it fills in the periods for you. So you get one, nine, two. You can see it's jumped to the second field already. One, nine, nine. So that's my live TV server address. Now I go over here and I pick done. And that's the port. I don't have a username or password. So now all I have to do is go down, enable, and boom, there we're loading the uh, program guide. Yeah, because I had just had read that uh, DVB Logic had released their PVR client for Kodi, compatible with the Raspberry Pi 2. I like their disclaimer down here, that's pretty nice. <laughs> This is unstable software. The authors are in no way responsible for failed recordings, incorrect timers, wasted hours, or any other undesirable effects. But actually, it, it I haven't had any trouble with it. It works seems to work pretty good. So here we're loading live TV. I don't have the hardware decoder licenses installed. Probably take a couple of days to get those. So let us go back. So we're back here. See, we shall go to live TV, and there we go. Here's our channels. Days, I was there we go. My yeah, we'll mute the audio there. That looks like it works. In fact, that looks pretty smooth. So that's an SD channel. Let's try it. 1080i, this one. So this is 1080i, and let's go back from the main screen. If you do a plus, you can see down here we've got 1080 video, Dolby 5.1 audio. Yeah, you can tell it's stuttering a little bit. Now we're at 900 megahertz. Uh, CPU temperature is going up a little bit. And we've basically maxed out one CPU at 100%. Yeah, you can see how it's uh, breaking up a little bit on the, on the decoding. So I think it still needs the hardware decoders. So let's stop the TV. And then I'll show you. Here's your program guide, or TV channel guide you notice you've got the just the arbitrary channel number the name and then you've got that sort of generic icon and if we go to the full screen program guide you've got basically the number channel name but it's pretty boring let's see if we can fix that so I will go over here system and I'll go to a live TV. So that's a something they don't have working yet. Is the they have this is grayed out, scan for missing icons, so they don't have the channel icon stuff working yet. That's interesting. So they do have the channel manager. You can go through and, and assign individual icons, but that's kind of uh, tedious because you've got 100 channels. You've got to select 100 different icons one at a time, so I guess we can't do that yet. A few functions are missing, but uh, it's, it's usable as is. Uh, check out my channel for uh, some of my other Raspberry Pi and cable cutting videos. Uh, this will be my new smarter smart TV. At least it's a faster smart TV.
subscribe to the channel for updates. If you have any questions or comments, put that down below the video description. And as always, thanks for watching.